Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel and today we are sketching one of Hong Kong's historic buildings. What is up? It's Becky, your sketching flat from Hong Kong, and I'm currently at the University of Hong Kong. I'm here with a couple of sketchers from the Hong Kong Heritage Sketchers um, crew, and we're just here, just having some fun. A couple of us are sketching around the area. We're sketching this building. It's called the Lokyu Building. Lokyu Building. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right. I sh probably should have checked before I recorded this bit, but it's essentially it's January. Um, I'm, it's currently like a really nice like 17 degrees Celsius so it's wonderful like perfect t-shirt weather um, but it's a little bit cloudy today so the winds are a little bit chilly and it's great to be out here and sketching again I brought my gouache kit this time I haven't sketched with gouache since October so I'm actually a little bit nervous on how it's gonna turn out I've been doing a lot of watercolors and I don't know if you caught up with that series, but I did a little bit of a December daily where I was drawing something every day. And um, also watercolor. So I'm a little bit rusty, but I'm hoping that this will be kind of fun to do. And I'm taking you all with me as usual. Also look at this new watch, what is up? But what happened is um, my Fitbit broke down and I just I had to find a new one. So I bought like a new Apple watch the lowest end version and I'm kind of digging it but also not digging that I have to charge it every single day. So I believe this is one of the oldest universities in Hong Kong if not the oldest. Um, as you can see this is I just when walking in I saw posters of it being like the 111th um, cohort that graduated so I think this is like a legacy from the British colonialism era so a lot of the architecture is very like old historian and it's very different from like the modern skyscraper buildings that you see in Hong Kong like there's a lot of British legacy kind of like intermingled with the modern glass architecture and I just thought that it was so interesting to you know take a step and um, actually sketch these more heritage buildings because it is part of a heritage. The word is becoming weird now. Heritage, heritage, her heritage. Oh, anyway, we're gonna explore the campus a little bit more. crazy about all these like universities in Hong Kong I'm hoping you can still hear me is that all of these are public spaces so we were able to enter here without any ID anything um, nothing ever happens around here really so ooh, found one of our sketchers in the wild but I should explore kind of just like going into these um, these historical buildings or just these public facilities a little bit more I mean I know these are not public public but pretty public like look at that there's just like benches there chilling I mean that's also like the public road right there with like the cars driving by so it's really accessible but now for the true purpose that I'm here the ladies room here at about 9 30 a.m uh, me and my friend that i'm going to introduce you in a bit that is and now that it's 11 30 the place is actually starting to get a little bit crowded which is quite interesting um it's good to know that these places are alive and well so this is the spot that i've chosen to sketch and it's such a big overwhelming building so i think i'm just going to focus on this bit right here uh, mainly because I think there's like some points of contrast like you've got the sky even though it's a little bit gray you've got the trees and then you've got the building so I think there's like different elements to play with and we might work with that so I'm also currently with my friend Jimmy hi Jimmy hi <laughs> thanks for coming along this sketch with of me of course it's amazing <laughs> thanks for having me of course 
and we're both going to attempt this building. Moby Dick. Do you think it's a pun on Moby Dick? I don't know maybe it is. This is like the combo that I now will have to have in my bag at all times. Although it has been a while since I used gouache to paint, um, the base of both gouache and watercolor is the same, which is a drawing base. And here, I'm just trying to figure out where to place all the elements because I have a composition that I already had in mind. So I was drawing it thinly with this Prismacolor um, red pencil before I ended up shading it in a little bit thicker uh, But I actually didn't bring an eraser with me So this is why I actually just opted for shading it a little bit thicker while making a mental note to myself that I need to um, cover the background layers with more opaque colors and here I am just putting out stuff on my palette. So this is an art toolkit pocket palette and there was dry gouache in it before but last night I kind of scraped all the dry gouache off. Um, so I'm just using some colors here, mainly yellow ochre, Prussian blue, burnt sienna, um, I think that's alizarin crimson, black, a little bit of black, and permanent white. So with that set up, we can now really start with the background and here, as you can tell by the water just dripping everywhere, I'm using a very wet layer and the primary reason for me to do this at this point or at this stage of the sketch is I just want to get rid of the white as soon as possible and the reason for that is because it just feels a little bit intimidating and I knew that I wanted sort of the base colors for everything. A little bit of a really really faded blue for the sky because it was a really cloudy day today and then I wanted a burnt sienna undertone mixed with yellow ochre uh, for the buildings and then primarily yellow ochre for the tree. So with that underpainting kind of done, I'm just working to get rid of these uh, pencil marks out of the way. So I'm dipping my brush into that titanium or permanent white before I start blocking in all the big shapes and the big colors of the others. So I'm sticking to this brush for as long as possible. This is, I believe, a three quarter inch rosemary um, and coat brush. And I think this was part of a second sale actually that I found this brush and it ended up being like one of my favorite things. Uh, flat brushes are always great and the reason for that is because flat brushes kind of force you to cover a really big area or at least when they're large in size. And then you can also make some really thin lines which I didn't really do much of. But as you can see, I actually didn't end up doing or using the flat brush for long. And instead, I opted very quickly for an etcher round size 6, I believe, of a brush because it comes to a really tapered point and I wanted to put in a lot of the detail because I think a lot of the part that attracted me to this building, well, I guess it's because also the kind of quote-unquote goal of the sketch outing is to sketch the heritage of this building so I thought that the elements were quite important so I was just trying to do in the big ones first so like primarily the red and then the yellow arches and then of course the white detail that goes in and white is never truly white so this is white mixed with a little bit of Prussian blue, alizarin crimson, and also yellow ochre. Now the reason why I didn't really opt for a cadmium yellow even though I had it in my pack is because it was an overcast day, the colors weren't super bright and I now realize that there is very rare that cadmium yellow occurs outdoors or in nature in the world because it's such a bright yellow unless I'm drawing like botanicals or something. But when I'm drawing landscapes, it's usually very, um, very much focused on the ochres and the more muted colors. So I think I tend to gravitate towards them a little more, um, just because the colors are a little bit more easy to mix with. And I know that kind of skews the whole sketch to one tone, but I do like for it to represent that way or for me to actually accurately represent what I saw into this sketch. Anyways, a lot of the sketch is actually me noodling in with the details and I know this might not be ideal but because there wasn't any like dramatic lighting that I could see happen with this particular view, um, I just left it at that and wanted to make sure that 
even though I didn't actually get all of the details because if you look at the um, building itself, it is so intricate. There's so many little architectural like arches and everything. So I just try to get in the big shapes, mainly the planes that are in light and the planes that are in shadow. So any planes that are kind of in the middle of that, I didn't really do much of it. And it did take some extra work to try and see which planes exactly um, were in light and shadow because the differences were so subtle. And I tried to make a little bit of those differences show up in the sketch, but I think it wasn't very evident. And I think I started off holding the pencil and also the brush a little bit more loosely But now because I'm getting into the intricate details, I'm holding it more like a pencil Which might not be the best thing and I think this is when I realized like maybe sketching buildings is not um, For me, but I don't know. I think it's always a good thing to increase your repertoire of things that you sketch because you always get to try and you always suck at everything in the beginning because there's just no way that you can try something and immediately you're good so i think i'm just trying to learn to enjoy the process and embrace it and kind of figure out how i would um, approach the scenes in general and one of my art goals this year is i do want to learn a little bit more about how to draw primarily um, so i'm taking this course from proko it's called drawings basic course and it hasn't really started just yet but i'm really excited to do that and one of the reasons why is because i think drawing is like the basic of everything and my drawing skills suck like if you look at this Everything is so like out of proportion or not out of proportion, but like they're not parallel. The lines are not neat. And I think strengthening like my knowledge of light and shadow, for example, or like form or gesture would actually really help in improving my paintings. Another course that I'm actually doing at the moment is actually a six week, I believe, workshop with Jared Cullum. He is doing a course on seasons in watercolor although i know that it's not gouache but i think that a lot of the principles apply for sketching scenes in both watercolor and gouache i think it just comes down to the basic fundamentals which is like lighting composition and all of that but i'm trying to see how i can improve day to day because i think i've reached sort of a plateau point where I can only improve so far without getting any feedback, getting any additional critique, or getting any additional comments about what I can improve and how I can keep going. Like, of course, I can see uh, really professional artists and kind of wonder how they do it. But I think having some personalized critique might help a little bit because at this point, like, I can kind of see my perspective is a bit off. Color temperatures are a little bit off, like they're not dramatic enough, although it was a very static-ish image, but um, I should be able to portray any situation really um, that I want to but at the same time if I look back at like my first videos or something I can see that I've come a long way so um, it's not that I hate where I am at the moment but it's more like I'm trying to audit where I am at this point so that I can have a better understanding on how to proceed forward and where to improve on although that also comes with mileage so really I just gotta keep sketching hopefully if you guys are around for it, you will get to see all the different improvements. And lastly, this painting was looking a bit flat. And I remember that I still have a tree that I really need to include. So here I am splashing the green with some classic Prussian blue, yellow ochre. And I'm adding in a touch of alizarin crimson just to knock down that saturation and that vibrance a little bit because look at how bright that is. But I mean, at the same time, like Prussian blue and yellow ochre don't really mix to be the brightest green in the first place thankfully it's a little bit muted but still i still wanted to knock down that saturation especially because everything else across the page is very muted so i'm just adding in some last minute details um adding in some lines and i think with some final touches we're about done <laughs> I think with that sketch done, we are able to call it a gay. A gay. <laughs> ah! All right, I think with that sketch done, we're able to call it a day. Thanks so much, guys, for joining me once again, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!